Hey y'all, and welcome back to our second bonus episode of Old Iron Talk. I'm your host, Callie Gurton, and today we are going to do a special bonus Show Me Your Shed episode with Kurt Allman. He's going to be taking us through his tractor factory and showcasing some of his items. Um, we've started the Show Me Your Shed to kind of uh, help us be able to look at other people's collection and share that with everybody. So we're excited to take you guys on this adventure with us. Um, but first, we're going to give you a little update on what we've been up to. So the, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I went to see my brother and nephews and they live in Missouri. Well, I had to share with you guys the wheelie popper tractor. So this, this is John Deere 530 that he uses to run the bale wrapper. And she's a little underpowered for moving it, but she gets the job done. It is my nephew's favorite tractor though, because when you're moving it from farm to farm, you definitely are popping some wheelies. So they love calling that thing the wheelie popper. In addition to that, we did go to the Boss Brothers Threshing Show this past weekend. Um, it was a really good show. They have a good variety of tractors and equipment there. Um, it's a great show to go to as far as running like threshing machines. You get to plow. They have a sawmill, all kinds of different things going on. Um, my brother always helps haul some tractors out there from my grandparents' farm. Um, we took out the 2030W that you see pictured here. We did some plowing with it and some threshing with it as well. And we've got some videos of that. Um, we also ran the 2040G quite a bit on the threshing machine. Then they had a clover hauler as well that we tried to use that a little bit, but that didn't want to run as well. So we didn't get to use that a ton, but it was pretty cool because we had the F Rumley, the W and the G all running the two separators and the clover hauler at once so that was fun to see so i'm thankful that we got to go and participate at that it's a great show if you ever want to check it out you definitely should um every other year they switch the time so this year it was in the summer so next year it'll be in september in the fall but they always have a lot of things going on great vendors so we recommend you check it out if you ever want to all right, now we're going to get to talking with Kurt, and we're going to get a little tour of his collection and what he's got in the tractor factory. All right, Kurt, go for it. Hey, uh, well, uh, again, I'm your guinea pig, uh, so uh, I, I, I don't know exactly how this is going to go, but it looks a whole lot safer than some of the other stuff you had me do. I don't think we're going to need an ambulance or set anything on fire. So, <laughs> Well, I hope not. I mean, we'll see how it goes, but hopefully not. <laughs> So what do, we, what do we do? This is called Show Me Your Shed. Okay, so Show Me Your Shed. We're going to use this where collectors can kind of show off what you got. Um, it's pretty simple. All you need is your cell phone, really. Um, you don't necessarily need Wi-Fi because we're using Zoom. We'll send you a link, and then you can take us on a tour of your collection. It just kind of helps preserve the history behind the stuff that you guys have in your shed and helps you teach us what you've learned along the way. So we get to look at other people's sheds. Nothing better yep. than that. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I've got uh, much to show you here. It's just it's it's all my junk. But uh, I know how much I like looking at other people's junk. So I'll show you exactly. all mine, and and we'll uh, we hope uh, the show me the shed. Uh, hope we have some people sign up for it because uh, uh, it sure be neat to see everybody's collection. So this building, uh, it used to be a uh, a ski factory. Um, uh, went out, you know, I think it was in operation for about 10 years and, and, uh, you know, then went out of business, which, you know, selling snow skis in central Illinois, where it's flatter than a pancake, uh, there, there might've been a flaw in that, in that business plan. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they, they made the uh, snow skis, water skis, uh, uh, hockey sticks, toboggans, uh, things like that. The property had fell into complete disrepair. There was no roof on it. Um, the end walls were gone. Um, it had kind of been an eyesore in, in our little community for probably 20, 25 years. It was just an abandoned building, but it had this huge pad of concrete. And every tractor guy knows what concrete is worth <laughs> and uh, and how hard to get it, get it is. So uh, I had a young man named Tyler Johnson that uh, I drew it and uh, Tyler built it and he did a fabulous job. So we were even able to salvage the old... Uh, uh, iron uh, arched trusses and and kind of it's got a good look to it. It's it's a good place for tractors and place to hang out and tell tractor tales. That is awesome. Okay, well, I will walk over here and uh, we'll 
kick her off with an Oliver. You're going to see a lot of Olivers. So uh, let me get my phone right. switched here. So, you know, this first tractor we've got up here um, is a, uh, you're going to see a lot of Olivers because I'm, I'm kind of Oliver nuts. So, um, you know, the first tractor we got up here is a 1755 Oliver. And I, I found this tractor um, by accident. I was looking for a tractor to use a brush mower on because I was cleaning up a farm and and uh, found this, and it was only a 2,000-hour tractor. Can you tell us why is that one red, white, and blue? Yeah, so it was it was uh, made for that Heritage Series, and, um, you know, the main reason um, that it was red, white, and blue was to catch the attention, you know, for customers. Uh, you know, they would take it to farm expositions like Farm Progress Show and, and places like that, and, uh, you know, kind of made it stand out okay. a little bit. Um, you know, it's pretty cool. It's kind of turned into one of my favorite tractors wow. and, uh, like it a lot. Uh, next one at super 66, that's actually one of my grandpa's tractors. Um, you know, it's just a nice little one. And, and, and this is a 1655 and that's also one of my grandpa's tractors. And he was a custom hay baler. And, uh, so this 1655 actually has a high speed road gear in it. And he would, uh, this, after he went to round bales, uh, he would pull the round baler from farm to farm. And there was like an inch and a half of road tar and asphalt on top of that fender. Uh, <laughs> cause he went, uh, uh, he went 90 mile an oh hour, boy. no matter what he was driving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's just the way he drove stuff. Yeah. Uh, so um got signs hanging up everywhere um you might think this is kind of odd i got an orange one right in the middle of the mix but uh, this is a wd-45 diesel and it is uh all original yeah so it's been touched that up. is a very nice original tractor yeah it is it Something is it looks like it's even been redone yeah yeah that's exactly right i that's think what well, the back wheels have been touched up just a little bit it's had a few touch-ups here and there but um, but you know, I like any kind, I don't care if they're common, what color, when they're real nice originals, I just, I really like those. And this, this is a real nice original tractor. This is a 1555 loader special. Uh, so it's really kind of a super stripped down 1555. You'll see it's got that real basic seat on it. No three point hitch or anything. Uh, but it's only got like 800 hours on it. Um, so that was wow. the main, yeah, that was the main reason I bought that. Um, this is a Super 77 that's just a, a real bone stock original tractor and original paint, original tires. And, mm -hmm. um, this is pretty cool. Um, you know, you, you may look at that and go, well, that's not really that rare. It's just a 1550 gas, but um, I have not touched mm -hmm. this tractor. Haven't even haven't even cleaned it up, um, but it's got 78 hours on it. 78 wow. original hours. And um, kind oh, of an odd deal. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's super, super rare to find one with that low hours and uh, super, uh, super clean. And a uh, guy had bought it um, in New York State, and I think okay. he had passed away like maybe three years later. And it sat in uh, their car garage right next to his wife's car. And that's where it sat for, you know, 15 Holy or 20 cow. years before I found it. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. That is very cool. Yeah. Okay, you can't skip over the tank. No, I can't can't do that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, everybody walks in and go and they go, "What's that?" And I said, "Well, I'll tell you exactly <laughs> what that is. That is what happens whenever your wife goes to see her mom in Mississippi and you are alone in the house cuz she can't come home for <laughs> for 2 weeks oh. and you're alone with the internet." I don't know that everybody can relate to that story. Uh well, you know, I, I don't know if they can either, but uh, that that I'm telling you, I don't make up the news. I just report the news. Okay, so that's how it happened. Uh, there so, you go. Yeah, so I'm kind of hoping for a riot in Oklahoma. So I've been keeping my fingers crossed. So uh, that's a KB Series International truck. Um, the next one we've got here is a Baylor tractor. Yeah. Um, I'm I've never been a fan of a cultivator tractor, but that hands down Literally, the, yes yeah hands down the worst design you've ever seen <laughs> uh, but that's all wow. original paint yeah so you know i just couldn't pass it up yeah. because of that original paint um 
I think I really think it's probably one of the most original pre thirty tractors in existence. Um, so it's had very very That's, little yeah. use. Yeah, but um, that is awesome. Yeah, but if you'd driven it much, you you know you definitely would want to use it much. So uh, this is a screen cooled hider which is a little different than, you know, the traditional hiders that you see with a mm -hmm. conventional radiator. So this has got a screen cooled radiator, uh, needs a canopy on it. Um, uh, still working on the canopy. Actually it's done. I just haven't installed it yet. Uh, great restoration on that. Took a lot of work. It was very trying. Um, double a Emerson Branningham. That's a real nice original, uh, Oliver 770, uh, square wow. fender. Uh, again, one of my grandpa's favorite tractors, only like 1,800 hours. What was it? Yeah. Um, so always, always like that one. It's, a, yeah, it, it is. It's a pleasure to drive. So, uh, yeah, I can, I can guess. Can you show us the sign that was behind those last three tractors? Oh, yeah. On your yeah. back wall. Yeah. 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 So that, that is an original uh, billboard. Uh, for U.S. Royal Tires um, that I found, uh, there was a guy that... That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. He had actually bought an archive of old billboards, and he didn't have much for ag stuff. Um, I've got another one that I'm going to show you whenever we go up front, but... Uh, All right. Yeah, but that, I, I, I just thought the artwork on it was really cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyhow. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, those kind of super So, duper. who do you have do a lot of your restorations for your stuff that you do have restored? Um, well, I, so I, I, so I, I do, um, I do some of the, uh, mechan light mechanical stuff myself, um, you know, but not, not a ton of it. I'm, I'm not super good. Um, but I, I, Chris Hudson works on stuff. Carl Jansen works on stuff. Those are kind of my main go-to guys. They, they do a great job. Um, and then when it gets really, really complicated, I'll have K.R. Huff, uh, come in and help when we have to create stuff from thin air, you know? Uh, Doug Edwards does a lot of my painting for me, um, but okay. I, I love to work in my shop. Um, this is, uh, that, that's, that's our bar that we made, and we, we cut an Oliver manure spreader in half lengthways, uh, and then I mounted it up to the wall, put a brass rail and stuff on it, and by golly, I even filled it up. <laughs> so, it is. Yeah, that's yeah. So. Idea. Yeah. Oh, hey, don't act all surprised, Callie. I've seen you leaning on this thing. I don't know how much. <laughs> so, that couldn't have been me. I'm pretty sure it was you. I, 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 I bet if we took elbow prints, we could match them up. Uh, this is a Townsend tractor. Um, it was... Um, uh, uh, I've always just always had a thing for these. I, you know, they look like an old steam engine, and and I I actually got to meet Roy Townsend's grandson, and he sat at my dining room table and told me stories about his grandpa, and you know, just I bet yeah yeah it was really cool, really cool. It made the made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. So, um, oh, I want to show you this picture here real quick. So uh, that was a scene from the neighborhood that I grew up in, and all of those guys got together to do the uh, fall plowing for the guy that's leaned down there in, in the in the lower right hand corner. And uh, uh, one of the, one of the great things that I love about this is the third guy over standing up, the third guy from the right. That's my dad, and uh, he had just gotten that home from awesome. Vietnam. That is such a cool picture. <laughs> it is. It is. It's 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 totally cool. And uh, those are all the guys that I grew up with whenever I was yeah. a kid. Um, you know, so I, I remember them all. Uh, you know, they all they farmed all around us. So uh, it's just pretty neat picture that guy found okay. recently. Um, so this yeah, next yeah, this next tractor um, this next tractor is a lion tractor and. Uh, and I guess, you know, if you thought this was a great tractor and fun to run, you would be lying. I think that's why they uh, named it this. <laughs> so uh, really a miserable thing to try to run. Um, if you turn right, you go left. If you turn left, you go right. And then it's opposite when you back up. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you're, whatever, you really got to hang on whenever you're trying to make a turn. Uh, 
I just can't imagine farming with something like that. I can't either. I can't either. I mean, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have any pulling capacity. Very many, yeah. And you, you make a you make a hard right turn, and it's going to throw you right out of the seat, you know. Uh, so, uh, but it was <laughs> it was an idea that they had come up with. They weren't always the safest machines. No, heaven's sakes, no, they I weren't. I said they weren't always the safest machines they made back in the day. No, and they and the engines really ran loud where you <laughs> couldn't hear, too. <laughs> so you had to have people repeat stuff. <laughs> uh, this is a Graham Bradley standard, um, which is kind of rare. It, it, probably one out of ten Graham Bradleys mm -hmm. are standards. and I just always like the lines of this tractor. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, always had a good look to it. Um, we'll go back, uh, I'll take you back and we'll kind of go through the, uh, uh, the other side over there a little bit and we'll make our way back up to the dealership. I'll show you that stuff. Um, got a lot, always like signs. I got a lot of signs hanging up. Uh, my very first vehicle was an international scout. So, you know, I had to relive my, uh, 16 year old youth there. And uh, get a scout. This one is much nicer than the one I drove. I can assure you of that. Uh, but maybe. Yeah. Um, this engine in the back here is a monitor, okay. and uh, a good friend of mine from Olman uh, sold me that. This is a Rome tractor. Um, I always thought that was real cool. Um, there's only just a few known of those. Um, I was going to say, that's what it looks like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah, kind of, yeah. it kind of looks like a self-propelled sickle bar more. Um, mm -hmm. same, same like this next one. And uh, I found this one in a barn in Belgium. Uh, my buddy uh, Martin Vanderzanden and I uh, purchased that one, and yeah. I brought it home. And always been a heart par guy. So I've uh, got a 2240 and an 1836, and uh, I've got a few other heart pars in another building. Okay, now a common question. Does you, most of your stuff run? Uh, well, it's just like everybody else's. I don't get it out as often <laughs> as I should, uh, you know, but uh, most of it runs. Most everything in this building runs. Um, uh, might take a little tinker in or something okay. to get things going, but for, for the most part. Yeah. Um, this is another one of my, uh, grandpa's 770s that flat, that square fendered 770 was hands down his favorite tractor. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, Doug Edwards painted this one and he can, he can put a coat of paint on one, uh, little fly <laughs> can't land on. So, <laughs> um, that was the first tractor I ever restored was that heart bar 70 orchard. Um, of course that was been done okay. all, almost 30 years ago, I think already. Wow. Yeah, so a um, lot more signs. Uh, that's for the grandkids. Uh, get that out and play choo-choo when we can. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a little Mayrath tractor that was designed to pull augers from farm to farm. Um, it's an Oliver 60 wide front. Um, just kind of original factory wide fronts are kind of hard to find. Uh this is an Oliver 60 standard, but it's serial number X1. So, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's the first experiment. Yeah, it is. It's first uh, experimental serial number 160. So it's made a little different than the rest Where of them. Where did you find that at? Um, you know, a good friend of mine, uh, so he had it for years and, and I kind of kept track okay. of it and, uh, and he was gracious enough to let me be the next caretaker for it. So, uh, mm -hmm. I completely restored it. It looks like I got a tire I need to air awesome. up there, but, um, this tractor, uh, <laughs> I, I got quite a story oh with this tractor. Um, so this is a Minneapolis, uh, a twin city JTO. Uh, but you remember the Jim Ertle auction that we had? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was um, you know that was one of the bigger antique tractor auctions that we had. And whenever uh, we were getting the sale ready, this was the only yeah, it was the only tractor that ran. Wow! Uh, so this pulled everything out of the sheds. And uh, holy cow! Uh, yeah, I know it did. It did tons and tons of work. You, you know, 
Um, Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to believe, but that, yeah, that pulled millions of dollars worth of tractors out of the shed. So years later, it shows up at one of my consignment sales and we, we all recognized that the whole crew did because we used it the whole time and we're like, there's old yeller, you know? So, uh, uh, we had to, had to buy it back and put it in the museum because, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a uh, kind of, it's, it's sentimental about it. So, um, anyhow, uh, it's a good one. Uh, oh, I, th- I think we kind of lost you there for just a little bit, but we're That's back. Awesome. Uh, so this is the um, dealership that I built inside of my building, and I was I was kind of trying to recreate an Oliver dealership um, just like it was whenever I was a kid, and uh, so uh, that's that's kind of what I've done. I've had a lot of fun, okay. l- a lot of fun doing it, you know, trying to make it look as realistic as possible. Um, that sign right there was the very first sign I ever bought. Um, Brought it home on a bicycle. Oh my gosh! How old were you? <laughs> I, 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 Twelve or thirteen, might have been oh fourteen. You know, uh, but oh, it was crazy. a good thing it wasn't a windy day. I, I might not have made her home on the bike. <laughs> so let's go in the dealership here, and I'll kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, got tractors. How long did it? Yeah, go ahead. How long did it take you to collect this amount of stuff for your dealership? Oh, my entire life. And, uh, How's it been? yeah. Yeah. And if you ask my boys, I'm, I'm an old man. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, I've gathered signs and literature and, and all kinds of memorabilia. Th- this is probably one of my favorite pieces. That is an original new old stock billboard, uh, for Oliver. And, wow. uh, I bought that from the, uh, the billboard guy. And, it, and if you're an Oliver guy, you'll recognize that as uh, they made postcards that matched that, that they gave away at the state fair. And uh, mm-hmm. so it, it's, uh, you know, it's an exact copy of that. So th- those were up and down the highways at one time. So, uh, you know, got signs and collect all kinds of things. Uh, you know, over over here behind the parts counter, I've tried to stock it okay. with... Uh, you know, with original new old stock parts of all kinds. There's uh, new old stock hoods and grills and and all kinds of little parts. Um, this is kind of interesting. That is the first uh, tractor-mounted radio. Uh, it was made by Farm Master and sold by Sears and Roebuck. And, uh, you know, you were pretty high fluting if you had something oh, like that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It is. It's 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 kind of different. I kind of want to put it on a tractor. You got some toys in there too, I see. Yep, yep. There's some toys down there in the showcase. Um, you know, I tried to collect all kinds of those and I've yeah. even got um, you know, I've even got some new old stock uh toys and boxes, you know, that we've put up in the display so that it looks, you know, just like the dealership whenever you went in and we tried to pile them up. I've had to buy a lot of individual oh, ones. Awesome. Well, that was uh, that was kind of all my junk. <laughs> so I'll... I was gonna say I don't know if that's all of it, but some of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a got a couple more a uh, couple more sheds full of stuff, and uh, I got some stuff at home that uh, that we're working on, and I always keep a few at home that I can ride on a Sunday afternoon. So we'll uh, maybe maybe we'll do that next time. Yes, I think everybody's got unique things. They've got unique items and stories. So it's great that we have a platform where we can kind of share that with everybody. So I'm excited for that too. Okay, I got one question for you before we stop here that I just want your opinion on for everybody. Do you think 100 years from now, tractors that are sold today will be as collectible as tractors that were sold 100 years ago today? Well, uh you know, as you just saw, I've got a lot of Olivers, and uh, I was just up at Arnie Meyer's open house, and I was talking with a guy about 50, 50 and 55 series Olivers, you know, so that's Olivers, four-digit Olivers made in the 60s and the 70s, and when I started collecting, uh, you know, I, I remember having the conversation with people all the time, why, well, nobody's going to collect that four-digit stuff, I mean, it's too new, you know, nobody's going to collect that, and now that's the hottest thing going. Um, you know, so it's, uh, I think people collect what they remember and, and, you know, now, now we're up into, uh, you know, 50, 50 and 55 series John Deere's that are, that are being collected. So gosh, the only, 
problem is, is you know, 100 years from now, I think to restore a tractor, you're going to have to have an electrical and computer, electrical engineering and computer science degree to even do the restoration. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I'm just curious to see, yeah, A, how tractors last that are built like today. I don't know if they'll have more like computer, pro I mean, there's a lot of more technology that goes into them. So I don't know how they'll last over the time. And like you said, maybe it will be because that's what people grow up with. So that's what they want to collect. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Well, this is a, I think this is such a cool uh, concept that you're doing, uh, Callie, for the podcast, because, uh, uh, you know, it's especially going to be great in the winter time when we're not, we're not out at shows and getting to see things. Uh, uh, but it, it's just really neat to be able to go into somebody's co collection and take a look at everything they've got. So I, I think you're onto something here. Yes, it is. We're really excited about it. Well, Kurt, thank you so much for doing this and being our guinea pig. I know everybody will be excited to see inside your tractor factory. You have a lot of stuff in there, signs, tractors, everything. So it was great to take a look around with you. Well, no problem. Glad to do it anytime. Thank you. Yep. See ya. See ya. You can find all our source material for our episodes on our website, oldirongarage.com. We encourage everyone to join us on Old Iron Garage and connect with other collectors. Again, we'd like to thank Kurt for being our guinea pig for the Show Me Your Shed edition of Old Iron Talk. If you'd like to join us on an episode or know someone that would, shoot us an email at info at oldirongarage.com. We'd love to feature your collection on an upcoming episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.